So this is a page from my sketchbook, which I always carry when I go to Kleenex. I'm a collector of problems in healthcare. This picture I have taken in a newborn care unit where these twins were born and they need to be kept warm, but there were no warmers. So the nurses actually kept these babies under a light bulb and have kept, kept a cellophane film on top of it. This is an image uh, from a dialysis center where a father has brought their kid and uh, they realize that the cost of doing dialysis every day is more than their daily wages. It's very difficult for them to absorb that. They could have accessed some of the government schemes, but they don't know how to do that. This is an image of uh, one of the public health settings where close to 150, 200 people come to see a doctor and doctor has approximately 90 seconds to see, to make a diagnosis and write a prescription. You can imagine how difficult that job is. This is another uh, primary healthcare set setting, which is uh, a common thing. You will uh, agree that even 150 kilometers from here, you will see a similar kind of a thing where there is a lack of information, you don't have proper equipments, and even actually the people don't know what to do with uh, the health, their healthcare. I have collected several such problems during my tenure as a fellow at Stanford India Biodesign, and uh, I could feel the pain of a father, a mother, a child, a family, where they don't have access to proper information, when they lack accessibility, and also they don't have money to pay for these healthcare services. And that is what I'm committed to solve. This is a child development clinic at uh, one of the tertiary care centers in India. You can imagine how many people are accessing that. So over there, uh, once a parent walked in with their five-year-old son and said, Ye bolta nahi hai. he's not able to speak. And the doctor, after examining, said, Ye sunta nahi hai, isliye bolta nahi hai. he's not able to hear, that's why he's not able to speak. And it's already too late to do any intervention because the child is five years old. Had this kid been tested for hearing loss at the time of birth, this could have been avoided. We could have saved the speech and mental development of this child. But this didn't happen. So why are we not screening babies at the time of birth? Close to 800,000 such babies are born all over the world every year, and they remain without screening, without early intervention, and they eventually lose their speech. And 90% of these are born in the resource-poor settings. Now, why are we not doing any kind of a hearing screening in these settings. The reasons are many. On the top of it, we lack technology. We don't have proper equipment to screen these babies. Second, we don't have uh, people who can screen these babies uh, in a proper way. You need specialists. And the topmost, these equipments, they won't perform in noisy environments. They require uh, a sophisticated environment to, uh, for the performance. And also, there is a lack of awareness. Not many parents would know, and in fact, I understand that not many people would know that if you can uh, intervene early, then you can save the speech of the child. So this is how I was uh, trying to understand this problem. And then what we have done is that we have innovated and created a sophisticated technology, which is Suham. Suham is basically a word in Sanskrit, which means you and I are the same. And that is where we connect with the baby. This is the first word that the baby hears from the universe, according to Vedic philosophy. This device is something which is very sophisticated. It's based on a gold standard technology, which is uh, the same technology which is used in the US or UK, but we have made it appropriate for resource poor setting. It can be used by any healthcare worker. It is very easy to be used. It is uh, something which gives uh, automated result as pass ref or redo, and it only takes 90 seconds to perform the test. This is Soham. This is a compact battery operated device. This is something which is also telemedicine enabled. So which makes it sure that every baby which is detected with hearing loss with this device gets an intervention in form of hearing aid, cochlear implant or rehabilitation. So that no matter where he or she is born should get the intervention. So we have not stopped just at the point where uh, we are innovating on the devices, but also on the business model where we can make it 
sell it to the government. At the same time, we make it available to the babies born at home. So we are leasing out the device to entrepreneurs. They take the devices from maternity homes to maternity homes and also from home to home and provide this as a service. So we are sharing revenue with them. This is an image from the hospital where we are doing uh, these tests. This is a public health setting. And you can imagine like how excited you can see that how excited the mother is while uh, the test is being conducted. And there are like multiple babies which are lined up to get uh, their babies tested. So far, we have uh, done more than 10,000 tests. 26 babies have been identified with hearing loss and are at different stages to uh, get intervention. There are 16 centers across India which are providing this as a service, and we want to add more. Currently, we are in four countries, a uh, very small number of uh, devices, but we are expanding in these four countries. There are three state governments, Tripura, Rajasthan, and Andhra Pradesh, which have started using the device, and there are 12 Indian cities uh, where we have a presence. We have been recognized as uh, top 50 technologies for low resource setting by WHO uh, this year, and also got the National Award for Indigenous Product Commercialization. So this is not the only thing which our lab is involved in. We also try to solve other problems. As you have seen that my sketchbook always gets filled with problems. So there are more than 400 million people who suffer from some or the other kind of refractive error. Like if you see in your row, a uh, person sitting next to me is most probably must be wearing a spectacle. But is it accessible? to everyone, like the screening and getting a pair of spectacle, is it like so easy to get in India? So in resource poor setting, mostly people don't get themselves screened and they don't get a pair of spectacle. Imagine an elderly, a woman, a child in rural areas, they don't get a chance to travel to cities, get themselves screened and then get a pair of spectacle. Most of the time, the cost of traveling is more than the cost of the spectacle itself. So how can we solve this problem? Now, we have partnered with uh, Carl Zeiss, which is a German manufacturer of precision optics, and we have created a business model where we are enabling a local youth to screen people in their local region. We train them to become vision entrepreneurs, and we monitor it through a tele-optometry uh, model and make sure that a pair of spectacle travels from our centralized manufacturing unit in Bangalore using India Post. So we are using local ingredients, local robust systems like India Post to solve our own problems. So this is an example of a business model innovation that we do. So far we have done 40,000 plus screenings, we have uh, distributed more than 17,000 spectacles and conducted multiple camps with the help of multiple partners and also local entrepreneurs across India. Uh, another project which is like very close to me is a human milk project. So here you can understand, most of you would know that how important human milk is for babies. And there are many babies who are unfortunate to not get this uh, because of biological and lifestyle issues. So how can we make sure that these babies receive this human milk when it is needed the most, when they are in NICUs and other constraint situations? What we are doing is like we are uh, in innovating on technologies and methods so that we can preserve this milk for longer time and make sure that milk is available for babies in resource poor setting. With the message of a stronger, bolder, and a self-reliant India, I would like to thank you all for your attention.